This video will show you how to use the basic draw tools in AutoCAD 2012. So we're going to focus on a few of the draw tools on the draw panel here on the home tab. But first we want to make sure we start with the right drawing. So we're going to go to the new command, sheet sets, architectural imperial. We'll switch to model space by clicking the model tab. And now if we click the line command, we notice the command windows and the tooltip near our cursor says specify first point. So we'll go ahead and click. And now what we're seeing here, and what I'm about to show you is going to require that polar tracking is turned on and a dynamic input is turned on. So dynamic input is giving us, as was previously mentioned, the length angle and tooltip near our cursor. And then polar tracking is going to give us the option to snap to the horizontal and vertical planes. So between these two features we'll be able to draw very accurate and orthogonal lines. So when we snap to the horizontal, we see a dashed green line extend off the screen. And if we wanted to draw a specific length line, like for example a two foot line, we could get the tooltip to say two foot, but it's not recommended to try and pick the length on the screen because AutoCAD is so accurate it can draw to the 1 over 256th of an inch accuracy. Just bumping the mouse slightly can, can uh, mess up your number so what you should do is just start pointing the cursor in the direction you want to draw the line make sure you're snapped to the horizontal and then you can start typing your length. So 2 and then the foot symbol and if it's zero inches, you don't have to type that. You do have to type the foot symbol, otherwise AutoCAD will assume inches. So you'd get a two inch line rather than a two foot line. You could, in that case, of course, just type 24 and enter, because 24 inches is two feet. So we're going to type two foot symbol and then press enter. So now we have a two foot line that's perfectly horizontal. So if we wanted to draw a line that was at an angle, say a one foot line at uh, 45 degrees. Again, we just generally start pointing in the right direction. Doesn't matter what the length and angle actually say. And we can type one foot symbol and then tab instead of enter. If we pressed enter right now, we'd get a one foot line that was uh, 42 degrees. If we press tab, we can see the one foot's now locked in. There's a little padlock next to that. Length. And now we want to type 45. And if we hit enter, it would finish the command, making a one foot line 45 degrees off of the horizontal in a counterclockwise direction. Otherwise, we could press tab again if we needed to get back and make some changes to the length. So we could keep, keep pressing tab to toggle back and forth. And then when we're done, we press enter. So now we have a one foot line that is 45 degrees. So we could continue that process or we could press escape or right click and select enter to finish the command. So next we're going to take a look at the properties of one of these lines. So if we select this line and then while it's selected we right click on the mouse we have an option here called properties. When we click properties, the properties palette opens and we can see at the very top we have a line selected. There's some general information about the line and if the information doesn't quite fit on the screen you get a scroll bar and then we can see some information about the geometry. The uh, length of the line, one foot, the angle, 45 degrees, and then also at start and end point. So 
if we hit escape that line is unselected and we can actually keep the properties palette open if we want and then we can select this other line and see its length and angle is zero when we want to close this properties palette we can click the X in the upper left here we hit escape to unselect that line next we'll take a look at drawing a circle so on the draw panel of the home tab we have the circle command we go ahead and click on that and we see the prompt is to specify the center point of the circle so we can go ahead and click and graphically we can see a circle starting to be created in our tooltip showing us the radius notice down on the command prompt it says specify radius of circle or we could type D and enter to toggle over to the diameter option so in this case we'll just go ahead and type 8 and enter so it assumed 8 inches because I didn't type a foot or an inch symbol if we select this circle and right click and go to properties we can see up here we have a circle selected rather than a line at the top of the properties palette we can see some good information here 8 inch radius obviously the diameter is twice that so 1 foot 4 diameter we get the circumference and the area and some of these values we can click in and make changes to some of them are just uh, reporting values that can't be changed and those those are grayed out so we can hit X to close that and escape so we'll take a quick look at selecting items so we can just individually click on items to select them we'll hit escape but if we click and let go of the mouse button and then go from right to left and click again this is a crossing window so anything that is completely within the window or passes through it will be selected so we have all three things selected now if we right click and go to properties up on the top we can see three things are selected if we click this drop down we can see two lines and one circle when all three things are selected and we're looking at properties only the common values show up between those two items so a circle uh, doesn't have a length and a line doesn't have a radius so those uncommon values between them don't show up here in the list so with that selection set if we wanted to look at the, the uh, properties for the circle we click on circle even though everything's still selected we can see the values specifically for the circle so we'll go ahead and hit escape to cancel that selection now if we select in the other direction from left to right so I'm clicking and letting go of the mouse we're not dragging and then I'll click here again in a second but before I do I'll point out the fact that when you pick from left to right only things completely within the window get selected this is helpful in a very uh, complex drawing where you want to specific, select some specific things uh, but there's a lot of extraneous information you don't want to grab so in this case only the angled line was selected because it's the only thing that was completely within the window so I'm going to hit escape now we're going to take a quick look at drawing arcs so we have this three point arc we pick that and that allows us to pick one I must have turned on ortho here so down here on the status bar I want to turn that off so ortho is off I pick one two three points so I can draw a three point arc the bottom part of that split button for the arc allows us to pick other types or or based on what information we know we can draw an arc using different inputs so start in direction if I click that we'll notice the command window and the tooltip says pick start point of arc 
No, because I picked start end direction, the next option is to pick the end and then the direction. So I can just graphically plug something in or I could type in an angle. So I'll just graphically click. The last draw tool that's used quite often that I want to show before we finish this video is the rectangle tool. So we click that, we could just quickly arbitrarily pick two diagonal points and draw a rectangle. Or we could draw one more accurately by picking our first point and then kind of head in the direction we want just to graphically see that we have a rectangle tool. Um, and then we'll notice on the command window there's some sub options there, area, dimensions, and rotation. So if we type A and enter, we'd be able to specify the area. If we type D, we can specify the dimensions. Also notice on the screen, with the dyna dynamic input turned on, we can see the prompt specify other point, or then there's a little down arrow symbol. So if we press the down arrow on the keyboard, we can see those same options, area, dimensions, rotation, if we pick dimensions, now we're prompted to specify the two dimensions of the rectangle. So I could type one foot, enter, and then six and enter. So I'm going to do six inches. I don't have to do the inch symbol because it assumes in inches. And then once I've specified a one foot by six inch rectangle, I have to tell it what quadrant based relative to my first pick I want that rectangle to be made. So now I just click once it's in the right spot on the screen and I've drawn a one foot by six inch rectangle. So that concludes this introductory video focusing on the draw tools.